Hey guys, my name is Mavi and I've spent the last 14 years in the plastic surgery and beauty industry, working alongside some of the best plastic surgeons in the country. Now I don't work for anybody, so I have unbiased opinions about hundreds of surgeons from across the world, and I can help you achieve the body of your dreams. Hey guys, do I have the episode for you today? We always talk on this show about the mental health roller coaster. And I feel like we've never really gone deep dive into what does it mean? What does that even mean? What's the mental health roller coaster? So today, I'm super excited to have Stacey Renee from Pop Recovery Systems. And we're going to really deep dive into what does it mean to have a mental health coach? What is the emotional roller coaster uh, that women go through and men through dur- during surgery? And what are we doing to help them? through that journey. Um, Stacy is the head at Pop Recovery Systems of Mental Health, and she's really going to take us through the patient experience. Stacy, thank you so much for being on today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Well, you know what? This week, I had uh, one of my girls say something to me that really got me thinking. She asked me, does cutting the skin, because she had a tummy tuck, does cutting the skin release stored trauma that was there? And I thought, well, that makes sense that it would. I don't know. I think it does. Let's let's talk to the experts. So, Stacey, take us through all of the mental health. The skin, the skin removal itself does not remove the trauma. And I think that's the big surprise to everything is people are like, Oh, I've been living with this. You know, it's been weighing on me my whole life, you know, and then when they remove the skin, they, you know, maybe that's a myth. I don't know that everyone thinks that way, but there's a lot that think, okay, once the skin is gone, you know, that's not true. The trauma is still in the cells in our body, you know, and sometimes we react. So, in the mental health part on this roller coaster, what we try to do is give people coping skills that can help them respond rather than react and to understand the trauma and to have that relationship with that trauma because having that relationship with that trauma, it's been sitting there and for whatever reason, it's been hid here, hid there. And even sometimes people have had some therapies and things and understood and worked on their trauma. But going through a surgery process is really interesting because, you know, when people, what I see is when people are told when they have to have an emergency surgery, people are like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have surgery. And they start freaking out. Right. But when people schedule surgery, there's a different mindset to that, you know. And so oftentimes they've seen before and after. and It's great that they can achieve these. They really can. But the problem is, is they don't see in between a lot of times. And we're fortunate that we have a lot of patients and clients and friends that are so transparent that post all of that journey on here. But still, we as human beings, sometimes we think we're the exception to the rule or or have that feeling. And we don't even acknowledge that feeling until we're on the post-surgery side. So with pop recovery systems, we get to work with people and prepare them. I always tell people. Pre-surgery prep leads to post-surgery success, you know, so because it really does, getting in that mindset. Because when I ask women, especially, but I'm sure it's the case for men, we're getting to work with more and more men. What are you doing to prepare for your surgery? You know, and they're like, well, they're getting their families ready. They're getting their jobs ready. I'm like, no, what are you doing? So we do, you know, try to encourage them to take 30 days before their surgery to take 30 minutes a day to get aligned because there is a lot that goes towards surgery and a lot of people don't realize that the, all, all the things that you need to prepare for surgery, you know, the supplies, the caretakers and everything else, and that can be overwhelming, right? So there's the feeling of overwhelming pre-surgery. And then also the excitement and anxiety. And as it gets closer to surgery, the excitement turns more to anxiety. So helping them process through that, sometimes the anxiety has nothing, a lot of times, has nothing to do with the surgery or the surgeon themselves, because we only work with, you know, reputable, qualified, board certified surgeons. So sometimes it has nothing to do with the surgery themselves. Sometimes it is from the past trauma, catastrophizing. 
thinking, what if this happens? What if that happens? Waiting for the other shoe to fall. A lot of people live life like that. That's their default system. So we are very fortunate, and we hope that what we do in the pre-surgery to prepare them for the post-surgery, and the thing is, is the skin removal in itself won't bring them confidence, because a lot of people say, oh, I want confidence. And they will be confident with the way that they look. But will they be confident with the way that they feel? So what we work with is helping them heal so that they can feel better and have that self-esteem because they're going to develop self-esteem through the surgery process or not. <laughs> True. They, they have the opportunity to heal the inside while the, the physical part's healing too. And I feel that is so amazing. Honestly, before this, journey before this pop recovery systems journey i don't think we had any resources for women who were on their plastic surgery journey for their mental health and for their nutrition all in one place that was one of the main reasons why when um i met you guys you and laura if you guys go back to listen to our episode of post-op depression, uh, I had Stacy and Laura from Pop Recovery Systems. Laura shared her story of how she went through the surgical journey and experienced post-op depression. And on that episode, I said, you're my first girl who has ever been so open to really want to come up and talk about it because I hear about it all the time. And I'm always asking, do you want to come talk about it? Do you want to talk about it on the show? And they always shy away from it. But Laura was the first one who really stood and said, hey, this is what happened to me. And I know I'm not alone. And when she approached me, I, I knew this is something that we need in our community because I've had heard it so many times from women experiencing it during their surgical journey. And like I've said so many times before, there's only so much that I can do to help them other than refer them to somebody who is a professional that can really help them. And it's kind of um, a, a an area, a gray area, because like we do have Dr. Alan Goodwin. We do have some mental health experts who specialize in plastic surgery, but it's not very many. And you really have to look. So when uh, Laura approached me with all of this, I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be amazing because so many women need this. The mental health aspect, but also the nutritional aspect, because how many times do I see or any of you guys, if you're looking online and you see tummy tuck incisions that are opening up, brachioplasties that are open, they're not closing right. And a lot of times the doctors are blamed or uh the staff is blamed or something happened but in reality it's that patient's not eating correctly they're not having enough protein they're not eating enough calories their body is is uh not eating and they can't heal and that nutritional aspect is so important as well as the mental health aspect because we all know they all go together if they're if your stomach and your gut is happy overall you're probably going to be pretty happy so in the in the course of working together with pop recovery systems finding a team of women who really supported each other really believed in the mission that we were working together with and believed that our patients and our girls our clients deserved it they deserve better you deserve better you deserve to have a full a full journey encompassing everything that you need. So it's not just you guys so many times, y'all know I help so many girls through their surgery and I can't tell you how many times we're at the end, we're at the surgery. And then it's like, well, now what? Okay. I had the surgery, like all of this hyper-focusing that had been happening before surgery to get to surgery day. And then it's like, okay, now hurry up and wait and heal. <laughs> It, yeah, it's like the six weeks before surgery with the excitement, it's like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. You know, it seems so long. But then the six weeks post-surgery seems even longer because they most of the clients that I work with, they didn't expect that it's going to take this long. Six weeks seems even longer. 
you know, on the post-surgery side, and this is the thing, that's why pre-surgery prep is so important because they don't know that they're going to be laid up for this amount of time, that they're not going to be able to do the things that they used to do for a period of time. They're going to be tired. You know, that's the biggest complaint is they're so tired and, and everything. And, and it's part of the process. But to get mentally prepared pre-surgery helps, you know, and even so, the healing process, like you said, nutrition, you know, and if they get the mindset to make, create those sustainable results, the surgeons that we work with want them to have sustainable results. They're not just a number. You know, it's not just an in and out. And I was speaking with somebody yesterday. You know, some people go out of the country for surgery. And in some countries, the behavior is different than in America, you know, as far as the surgery process goes. So the surgeons here that we work with really care. And they want the people to have the best surgery experience. But they also want them to have those sustainable results. They don't want them to have to go and have a revision, you know. And that's why they had they have us to help the patients because not all the time can the patients expose the trauma like you're saying especially you know at the doctor's office they may not say this you know and and it, to be able to process that and go through it I've had ladies who had canceled their surgeries before but really wanted surgery you know they really wanted to to have a difference but they maybe experienced domestic violence. I've also had women on the other side who I've worked with, you know, who have had the surgery and then they didn't feel sexy on the other side once they got that body because of childhood trauma, you know, that happened to that little body. So to be able to help them process these feelings and come out and develop the esteem and be able to let go mentally and emotionally of what was wearing on them, you know, it, that was in that weight. Because the mental and emotional abuse doesn't go away just because the skin goes away. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about self-sabotage because um, one, something you just touched on, which is the eating and the mental health and, you know, having the surgery is not going to be a magical cure. I've told you guys so many times I was one of those people that I thought it was, but it didn't. And then it led me on to this full self-discovery you know, a journey to be the best version of myself. Something that we do come across a lot is women who have the surgery, but they don't change their eating habits. They don't change the things that they were doing. And then before we know it, they're back at the surgeon's office. The surgery didn't work or my results didn't stay or, you know, they're blaming the surgeon. But in reality, it's, they did not maintain their results. That's it. That's it. Sustainability. You know, it, it does. It calls for a different mindset change to be determined, you know, also to carry this through because just, okay, after six weeks of healing, to be like, okay, I'm done. I can do it. Because surgery doesn't remove bad habits. <laughs> and bad habits have consequences. <laughs> they just do. They always will. You know, so surgery doesn't doesn't fix all of that so there is a self-sabotage and so it's there there's something we say you know in the recovery field the recovery areas you know the same thing and that got you here isn't gonna you know just you you just can't you know you just can't have the same thinking that got you to where you were when you do a transformation because if you don't transform the thinking with the transformation it's just not going to work so being able to, to, you know, Laura, our beautiful, bold, beautiful, you know, our beautiful, bold leader, Laura says that, you know, the only thing more expensive than getting this and getting it done right and making these sustainable life changes, being committed to it is getting a revision. <laughs> and that's what happens if we have that self-sabotaging, if we don't take a look at the bad habits and embrace you know, a lot of this is about acceptance. We work with so many women. You know, you help to empower women. Laura is a very powerful woman, you know. And so that's why it's so beautiful to be on this journey and to be able to watch women be able to have their voices. We've had women, we have women tell us, you know, I gained my voice through this recovery system because until they have people listen to them and validate them, you know, because we validate, but we also have compassionate accountability, you know. 
So to be able to be heard and to, to hear their words without somebody telling them what they're supposed to think or feel, but to help guide them, to empower themselves, that's what we do. You know. <laughs> and you know what I love on the other side? They really do learn and they really do listen. Um, but what I want to say is how many times have we had somebody who was not ready to learn, who was not willing to listen and who was not ready to change? And what happens? Well, they typically go back to the same it's the same thinking it's that spiral right because we can spiral up or we can spiral down I mean spiral goes both ways but the problem is is that if we don't change our thinking you know this is why Laura founded this is because you know she she found after three months out you know she wasn't feeling that confidence that she had thought she was going to feel post-surgery you know and so we just will we'll go crazy on the other side. We'll just be nuts. And there'll be nothing that's ever going to make us happy until we, you know, the surgery itself won't make us happy. You mm -hmm. know, and the surgeons are amazing. It's not the surgeon's fault. And I think that that's what some of the surgeons that we work with are realizing, you know, that they want, they, their intention is just like ours, to have those sustainable results. Because we hope that after women do the program for 12 weeks, that those things that we got to work on in those 12 weeks help them to continue to grow, thrive, and build their lives. You know, we don't, it's not like, that's why it's 12 weeks, is we don't want them to go back to the same behaviors that made them, you know, feel like they were defeated. You know, and I'm not saying everybody feels defeated because I'm going to have surgery too, and I'm not feeling defeated, and I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that their biggest fear oftentimes when I ask women, so what is it that you wanted to look like? What is it, you know, because we work on how they want to look, how they want to feel, the meditations, visualizations. And so a lot of times women have told me, I just don't want to look like I did. I just don't want to feel like I did. And so when I work with women, you know, I have this thing that, that we do with the women. And hopefully, you know, we are going to experience defeats in our lives as, women, as human beings, you know. And so, but it's my goal when women finish this program, I always do this, even with my girlfriends, is it's like, look, this is what we do as women. We shut her back, dab our eyes, put the chest, the shoulders back, the chest out, and then we walk, you know, and that's what an empowered woman does, right? Is we, we just handle these things. We don't let them defeat us. We have defeats, but we don't let them be defeated. We don't have to be defeated. And so that's my hope that women walk away with, with this program is just little by little. We don't get everything all in one day and probably not in a lifetime. Little by little, we continue to go up, spiral upwards rather than downwards. And it does take a mindset and a change and a shift. And certainly surgery is a transformation. And we have the opportunity through that to transform on the inside as well as the outside. Absolutely. And you know, I, I really love that you said that, that the surgery is the opportunity mm -hmm. to, like, it's like a trigger for change. And I, I feel that, like, to the root of my soul, because, like, I've talked about my own journey. After my surgery, I looked exactly how I wanted to look. Everything was great. I, my, I was happy in a lot of parts of my life, but there was a part of my life that I wasn't happy in. And I thought during my surgery that this part of my life would improve and it did it. And that triggered me like to the max because I had, I had set my hopes on hopefully this will make me feel better, be better uh, in this relationship. And then everything's just going to be better. It's going to be great. My life's going to be amazing. And then when it didn't happen exactly like that, my life was great and amazing in other areas of my life that I had put focus into and the area where I really needed the improvement, it wasn't there. And it really, I started therapy. I started um, really trying to learn about myself and why I was feeling unhappy, why I was feeling, why I would feel triggered by certain things. And it wasn't, it was the surgery. It's so funny because 
I get this question all the time. Does plastic surgery cause divorce? And I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen so many women, right? Like thousands of women go through surgery journeys. Not all of them get divorced. A lot of them have amazing surgery journeys and they have amazing partners and they're supportive. And then they go on and they're like the best thing that ever happened to them and their husband. They're so happy. Right. But then on the other side, I've seen uh, so many times situations where women have surgery where they tell me, I, you know, me and my girls, we get close. We, we get like this. They tell me, you know, I wouldn't leave before because I didn't think anybody would want me. I didn't think anybody would love me. I didn't think I was beautiful enough or pretty enough. And during the surgery, after I had my surgery, and a lot of times they're doing surgery by themselves, the the partner's not there, not being supportive, they're doing it for themselves all alone. And then they come out on the other side, and they start to feel beautiful, and sexy, and alive again. And they feel that in them, and then it boosts their confidence to believe, like, I deserve better than this. I deserve more than this treatment that I'm getting, or I deserve more than what I can, what this relationship is offering. And then they do go on to get divorced. So whenever people ask me, like, does plastic surgery cause divorce? That's a really hard question to answer because I want to say it doesn't because it really doesn't. It's the transformation that that woman is going through to believe that she deserves better and to believe that she can have the the love of their life, you know, be treated how they want to be treated. And they don't have to take what they were accepting when they thought that they couldn't get any better. That's, that's so true, because like I was saying, you can't develop confidence without, not true confidence without developing self-esteem. And if, you know, when we go through this process, we do, we look at some things, you know, because we have a lot of time to think. And that's what pre-surgery prep is about, because when you're in post-surgery, well, you can't exercise, you can't distract yourself from any of the things that you either distract, you know, distracted yourself, you know, from, because sometimes we do distract ourselves through actions, you know, so you can't do that post-surgery. So you do have a lot of time to think and evaluate and you can spend that time, you know, thinking on the positive end and, and creating that mindset and everything. And I want to say something else that, you know, the trauma part. You know, because a lot of times in trauma, people are fragmented. You know, it causes us to fragment when we're waiting for that other shoe to fall. So we learn to, you know, dodge and, and everything else. And so that's a part of distraction as well. You know, and so what happens is what we're helping people learn pre-surgery is how to regulate themselves. Because once we can regulate, we can be open to developing better coping mechanisms, you know, and everything. Because we talk about addiction, you know, with recovery. And so sometimes it's hand to mouth, no matter what that addiction is. And so we go mind to paper a lot of time, you know, with recovery, or we have somebody to talk out different things we've never thought about. And so sometimes when these girls, like you're saying, they get the surgeries, they start thinking about things they never thought about. And there's other possibilities instead of, you know, they, they've learned because you, you do develop esteem. You're coming through something that's, that's going to change. Hard. Your life. Yeah. yeah it's hard. Recover- these mommy makeover recoveries are tough, you guys. They're not mm-hmm. easy. They're tough. Yes. And it it does. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I said, you know, the thing is, is when you're on the other side, sometimes it feels isolated. Sometimes you feel alone because I was talking to somebody who had a surgery before, you know, and she's, and I said, you know, that's the thing is, I always suggest to people to get ready to to do your pre-surgery prep, your pre-surgery prep, not everybody else's, you know, preparation for you to have surgery, your prep, because you're going to be the one laid up post-surgery and you're going to be the one who can't physically do stuff. And sometimes it seems like the whole world's going on while you're laid up. <laughs> that, you know, I tell my girls all the time, that's probably one of the things that they don't expect the most. They, and so many times before, I think now there's a lot more information. Women are looking online to get educated on what to expect during recovery. But before, um, just a few years ago, just a couple of years ago, 
they were going preparing, 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 preparing up until the day of surgery. And then that was it. Then after that, I was like, oh, okay, well, I didn't even think about this. I didn't even think about that. I hadn't thought about, you know, who's going to be getting my groceries, who's going to be doing these other things. Because I think the hardest thing during the mommy makeover recovery is you do not, you're no longer able to get up and go. Right. You can barely get up and go to the bathroom. You can barely get up and go walk to the kitchen. So a lot of us, especially moms, losing that independence can kind of trigger a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions and thoughts that we wouldn't have really had time to think of before. You're so right. Yeah, it it, it makes us evaluate our self-worth. You know, because maybe we're making our worth belong to just being the mom in the family, just being the mom in the family. And that's a big deal, being the mom in the family. And you realize how much you can't do and what you do is being the mom in the family. But if we don't take the prep for ourselves and then we're laid up and we can't do the things that we are used to doing and we, you know, we're a great mom, but we feel like we're not a great mom when we're laid up. That mom guilt is really a thing post-surgery. It really is. And so when we've esteemed ourselves by what we've done and we keep doing that and not not esteeming ourselves on the inside, that's it, it's a hit, right? It's a hit. When we esteem ourselves, if we're not a mom, when we esteem ourselves by what we do at the gym or what we do at work, when we can't do the gym, and we can't do work, that's a hit to our esteem. That's how we're esteeming ourselves. So what surgery does is it causes you to go within and to find that acceptance and comfortability from within yourself. It's a beautiful thing. It's so, yeah. I love it. It's part of why I, you know, did launch the show. Part of why I'm doing what I'm doing because I saw so many amazing transformations, amazing women that I was like, oh my God, how are you the same girl that I just met? four weeks ago, who was shy in an oversized shirt and sweatpants and didn't feel good about themselves. And now, oh my God, you're walking in here and you're looking amazing. I can see the glow and the confidence in your face. And it wasn't just one time, a couple of times, like every day when I was in clinic, I was seeing these transformations over and over and over again. And I, I would hear the surgeons talk about it, but not as much as when they're talking about it now. That transformation and how they have the ability to ch- really change somebody's life in a way that that person, that patient is forever, forever thankful, forever grateful. I'm so, my surgeon, he's the best. I love him. And I, I, any chance I can't, I get to praise. Dr. Newell, y'all know he did my surgery. I'm so thankful because he really did change my life. And my surgeon who did my breast, she really did change my life because these are things, for example, my breast had been so big for so long. I had been, since I was a kid, I was like a, a C cup in elementary school. I had a huge breast. My Growing up, I had double Ds. When I breastfed, they got huge and then they got deflated. So then they were big and saggy. And that affected that affected my confidence so much because they were at least before they were big and perky. And I could wear tube tops and I could wear spaghetti straps and it was fine because my nipples were still pointing up. Mm-hmm. But after I breastfed two kids, my nipples were not pointing up anymore. <laughs> they were pointing down. Oh, you bend down and it's like, what happened? <laughs> I had my breast done too. Well, I had mine, you know, just filled back up because kids just nursed it all out. <laughs> yeah. And it's so common. And it's, you know, all of, I would see moms all the time and they're coming in and we all, it's like we all suffer the same thing after breastfeeding and after childbirth. Okay. And I, so many times my girls would be like, oh, I'm like, they're shy, right? To undress in front of me or undress in front of the doctor, which I experienced it too when I had to get undressed in front of my surgeon. But I always tell them like, I see so many boobs. I see so many tummies. I see so many naked bodies every day. Like you are and not like just another number, but there's nothing that you have 
that could scare me or it could make me think anything about you because I've seen so many before and we're all experiencing the same thing over and over and over again in different ways, different sizes, different amounts, but we're all experiencing it. And I feel like knowing as a patient, knowing that there ain't nothing you're going to show me that I haven't seen, girl. <laughs> I know. I know it's about that love and acceptance of ourselves, though, because we do. It, it's it's a just a little that we do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit at a time. And then it's like, oh, you know, yeah, we get to, to that that love and acceptance of ourselves through this journey process, you know. Because it is, it's a, it's, it's more than people think that it is, but it's so worth it if they get prepared. If they get prepared and the mental work really is where it's at. Um, I know at online, I see a lot of women who have, um, procedures that don't end up looking like how they expected it to look. And it always makes me feel so sad because I've experienced so much good, you know, from my surgery and it hurts me to my core to see an, to see another woman who their surgery went wrong and it didn't change their life for the better. It changed their life for the worse. What can, if, cause I know I have some, a lot of my audience has either had surgery or they're thinking about surgery. What's something that you can, um, a tip that you give for somebody who's on their surgery journey before I let you go, uh, for how they can mentally prepare for surgery? First off, they do the research on the surgeon. Don't go around the corner in the block to get your surgeon. Do some research. You know. Find, you know, make sure that they're board certified and that they are specialized, you know, in their field. So that's one, one tip. The second tip would be to when they're preparing to prepare themselves for that surgery to spend 30 minutes a day and meditate, breathing, you know, regulating your system when you get to feel anxious about any little thing, you know, to do some, some breathing exercises, regulate yourself. Because that's the opposite of the fragmentation. That's how you're going to clear that fragmentation and those what ifs and that catastrophizing and get clear. Because what is attached to surgery is uncertainty. That's people's biggest fear in surgery is uncertainty. You know, how, if I'm going to make it through, how am I going to look on the other side? So if you breathe, you know, and then get really focused and centered, you're going to start knowing yourself and knowing your body, you know, and having that relationship because you're going to have a relationship with your body. If you go to surgery, you're going to get a relationship. <laughs> you're going to get to know yourself very well. Yes. And so being able to take those breathing exercises, take 30 minutes a day, at least 30 days or surgery to yourself to prepare your mind to get focused to to you know focus on what you do want and not give energy to what you don't want you know being conscious being of conscious mind because you can't drink 30 days either you can't drink before surgery you can't smoke before surgery and so that's coping in itself sometimes and so really starting those coping practices pre-surgery are going to help you cope with post-surgery because you're right. You can't go back to the same way of life and no. be happy and not have to go back and get surgery. <laughs> <laughs> not end up back where you were when you came in the first place. Yeah. 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 That's, I'm, yeah. that's a beautiful piece of advice, Stacey. I am so thankful. Thank you for coming on the show today and sharing your wisdom and sharing your experience with us. Uh, if you guys, if you book me with, my VIP package, you get a whole team. So my VIP package includes Stacy and our mental health coach from Pop Recovery Systems, a nutritionist or a nutrition expert. We have dietitians, we have um, different types of experts, and you get your concierge wellness. So this person, the concierge wellness, we haven't talked about it yet, but this person who I, you guys, I put my whole heart and soul training and coming up with the protocols over here with uh, Chrissy, who's the head. And we really thought about how can we make your whole surgery experience the easiest, the best, the stress-free, the most stress-free. 
Um, how can we make it so that they really feel supported? How can we make it so that they don't feel like they have to go look on Google anytime? So my packages include the pop recovery systems. And if I don't know if you guys know, if you follow me on Instagram, Laura and I have been visiting plastic surgeons who we are partnering with for them to offer our services or the services to their patients so that when you leave their office, you leave with your surgery and a whole recovery system. So you have no doubts about what you're supposed to be doing, what you're supposed to be getting, what are you supposed to be eating? What are you supposed to be thinking? You, we figured it all out and we put it in a nice, beautiful package with a beautiful bow for you so that you can really have the best experience on your surgery journey. And I'm so happy. I'm so thankful. You guys know this is this is my jam. This is what I do. This is my love. I love this. And we did it with a lot of love. Laura and I really have, we call this our baby because we it's been a labor of love and it's been a labor of really just putting all of our passion behind our mission, which is to keep you safe during your surgery journey. And with that, I will see you guys next week. Thanks, Stacey. Thank you, Mavi. You have an amazing day.